today's demo is going to talk about solubility of ammonia in water. Okay? And the first thing you're going to see in here is the preparation of ammonia gas. Oh, it's dry. What's the name of this substance? What? Right here. Oh, calcium hydroxide. Right. And then, Jason, what's the name of this compound? All right. And then they combine. What's the name of this compound? All right. And then. All right. CA. You got CA plus two. CL. What charge is CL? So what would be an appropriate formula? Two. Two. All right. And what other substance could form when you have a stray hydrogen and a stray Water. hydroxide? Water. Uh, what physical state is water? Aqueous. All right. And in your opinion, what physical state would? What's the name of this stuff? HD. What's the name of this compound? Uh -huh. And what physical state would calcium chloride be in, you think? Solid. It could solid. be solid or it could be solid. Or aqueous, <laughs> dissolved in water. But sure, we'll go with that. So, okay. Now I'm going to make, I have a Bunsen burger, okay? It's not a very good picture of doing my best. <laughs> and then here's a, a little handle and the spigot. And then. The gas is coming out. We got fire raging, and this reaction happens. So say, if this reaction doesn't occur until I heat it, what is uh, what kind of a chemical change is this? Is it exothermic or endothermic? Exothermic. It won't proceed until I add heat to it. Endothermic. Where would the heat belong? As a product or as a reactant? Reactant. So Jacob, what kind of a reaction are we talking here? Combustion. No, no, you were just saying it. A reaction that requires heat oh, to proceed. Okay, and now I'm collecting the ammonia gas for a purpose. This thing is called a Florence flask. And then there's a tube going into it. You'll see the purpose of that tube later. And then I have a little plastic tube here that's disposable. And then I have a tube going over here. What gas is initially inside the Florence flask? Air. Right. We got air, right? And then I start heating this, and a gas is coming off. What's the identity of that gas? Ammonia. Wrong. You got ammonia. Hey, what would be evidence of ammonia? Uh, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Joshua? Because it's very illegal to humans, but... Yeah, which is, why I, which is why I'm going to be preparing the ammonia gas in a few minutes. All right, yeah. well, ammonia. It's, it's blue. Is ammonia an acid or a base? It's a base. It makes your hands slippery, you might have noticed. All right, <laughs> now look, I got red litmus paper. And red litmus paper turns blue in the presence of a base. It's pH paper, right? Kinda, it's less accurate. All it does is confirm whether it's an acid or a base. Uh -oh. Okay, and then there's a blue litmus paper. Uh, blue litmus paper turns red in the presence of an acid. So, which paper would be appropriate to test if it were indeed ammonia coming out of my floor, my Erwin Meyer flask? Red. Okay, well, we're going to try it over here. Don't need that much heat, right? Oops. What happened to more is better than that. Yeah. Well, safety is a valid consideration, maybe. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so hey, what, what uh, type of gas, acidic or basic, is coming out of this container? Basic. And uh, what gas, uh, what is the... Uh, pH range of ammonia gas? Well, I mean, is it basic or acidic? Oh, it's basic. Okay. So this could be ammonia gas. But we won't know until we smell it, right? Um, I prefer not. Let me see. Oh, 
I'll open the cork up. Maybe you'll smell it. I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> no, thank you. So how much is like death? You should smell it. It's okay. Really. It won't. It won't kill you that bad. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> that bad. It won't kill you that. <laughs> okay. You'll just die later. You don't smell it. Kill some brain cells. Oh well. My nose is hot. Uh, <laughs> It'll be the last. You one should there. smell it. It's pretty strong. Yeah, I smell it. Okay. So, so now we're gonna go to part B. How much did you smell? Now look, I don't know if this thing's full of ammonia gas. I hope it is. So don't laugh at me if it doesn't work. Alright, ready for when this solution I'll be making a phenol failing indicator solution. The solution will start clear and then it turns pink in the presence of a base. I'm going to dissolve it in. So I'm going to mix the phenol failing indicator and ethanol. And then you go, then you go one more, and two, one half, three more. And it just so happens that phenol failing dissolves well in alcohol, and alcohol dissolves well in water. So it's a way to trick the water into dissolving the phenol failing. Okay, so. What color does phenol phalene indicator turn in the presence of a base? Pink. Do you notice any slight pinkness down there? Yeah. Okay. So what gas was inside this glass too? Ammonia. Okay. Now look, if you had ammonia gas in here, and ammonia gas is extremely soluble in water, what would happen if I squirt some water in the bottom? What would happen to the ammonia gas in the air. That the water in turn pink? All right, now look, I put water in. Mm -hmm. The ammonia gas is normal atmospheric pressure, right? Where does the ammonia gas go? Does it stay there or does it dissolve into the water? Yeah. And then as the ammonia gas dissolves into the water, what happens to the pressure inside the flask? It drops. Right. Now, the atmospheric pressure pushing on the water, has it changed any? No. And so the atmospheric pressure keeps pushing on the water. There's no pressure pushing over here. So who's going to win? The high pressure or the low pressure? High pressure. So who's pushing harder? The air out here or the ammonia in here? The air. So what do you predict is going to happen if I... The water's going to shoot up a little too. Let's see if you're right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, look. 